Hi everyone, I decided to do a 12 sign read for you guys for the eclipse energies. So this is going to be for all 12 signs. I was just shuffling the Rider Waite mini here. We're going to do the main cards with the Gilded Tarot. I, the Lenormand Reverie, will pull after that, and then also the Metatron deck. So we'll pull cards for each sign, and then we'll do clarifications as well with the mini Rider Waite. And might as well roll the die. So as I go to each sign, we'll roll the dice, okay? So let me put out the first set of cards. We'll go from there. So this is for all 12 sides of the Zodiac, starting from Aries through Pisces. Aries to Pisces. Aries to Pisces, all 12 signs. Oh, look what just flipped over. The lever is upside down. So let's see what comes up for you guys. For Aries through Pisces, all 12 signs. I gotta turn it over, shuffle it the other way. Wrong way. Sometimes I just get really bent the wrong way. All right, so for all 12 signs, for the energies of this lunar eclipse, today is the 16th, uh, 17th rather, we're going into the night of the 18th, into the 19th is the lunar eclipse with the full moon, the full um, beaver full moon. So one more shuffle. Two. Okay. All right, so for all 12 signs, Aries through Pisces for this lunar eclipse full moon on November 19th, 2021. <sighs> Aries through Pisces. Aries through Pisces. Aries through Pisces. All right. So first card for Aries is the page. Sorry about that. Is the page of cups reversed? Let me focus that in for you. Okay. So for Aries through the Page of Cups reverse, we're going to put um, summary cards at the top so each element will have an energy as well. So for Taurus, we have the Six of Swords, Finding Peace. This, this could be two extremes, this Page of Cups. You know, one is the innocent, vulnerable, rejected energy, perhaps shy or baby crying, but it also could be a spoiled, entitled child is, you know, being a pain in the butt. So it also can be a rejection of love, you know, any kind of message, or it can be, um, yeah, it could even be a pet who feels rejected as well. So again, moving to peaceful waters, which is really peaceful, nice energy for Taurus. And then going into Gemini, we have the eight of wands reversed, which could be some kind of heated exchange. It could be keeping your feelings to yourself, not telling your true feelings. This can be delays as well communication, travel, anything like that. And then we have cancer, which is the nine of swords. This can be suffering in silence. This can just be having a hard time sleeping, stressed out, purging, right? Maybe you're hanging out in somebody else's crib and you're not comfortable there. Uh, we have a, an owl at the window, but I'm not sure if they're a wise owl or if they're a dark owl. It just depends on your situation and her frame of mind here. Um, And again, that can just be a purge. So it doesn't mean it's like something, the nine of swords is usually a long-standing suffering in silence, but it can also ref ref reference someone going through dark night of their soul who's in control of their purging, but is still going through purging. But again, it could be a sleepless night as well. Somebody could be up with a headache, whatever's making you feel like time is forever. And then we have um, Leo. So we have the ace of swords. So the truth is out for Leo, or perhaps they're speaking their truth. Perhaps the pen is mightier than the sword for Leo right now. And then we have Virgo. We have the Knight of Wands reversed. Now this can be the player energy, but it can also be someone just falling short on energy, right? So they had promised all this stuff and then they just couldn't follow through with it because they became exhausted. This also could be somebody paralyzed by their, uh, paralyzed by their passions here. So they're not a bad person, they're just uh, paralyzed. They can't 
move. <laughs> they can't function because they're paralyzed by the energy. Um, then we have Libra here. We have the Queen of Wands. The Queen of the Night comes up and Whitney Houston there. You know, very creative and sexy, but is she using her sexuality in a proper way like that is not manipulative because this card specifically in this deck can be a very fiery manipulative energy as well right using her sexuality to her benefit so then we have uh, Scorpio and there's the wounded warrior here so the wounded warriors on their last leg this is somebody who might have jumped out of a plane as well he's got one of those helmets on like they wear when we jump out of the plane but someone's down on their knee, perhaps they're asking for forgiveness or they're on the last leg, but they're refusing to give up. Then we have Sagittarius. As we're moving into Sagittarius, is the Queen of Cups reversed. So again, these people can be your energy or they could be someone in your energy. So this could be someone who's just really sad and longing for someone, very sad, right? She's very much Juliet energy here, longing for her Romeo and very sad or feeling rejected again here. But this also can be um, the energy of manipulation, right? Because water signs can be very manipulative. Or this can be someone who's very emotionally detached or unavailable or someone who drinks or is over emotional and or depression issues, alcoholism, any of that stuff can come up. And Sagittarius has a tendency towards addiction and so does Pisces for me anyway. So here we have the Capricorn energy, which is the Four of Pentacles, somebody holding their cards close to their chest, or perhaps they're clinging to time, money, or effort, not wanting to share. That can just be very being moderate with your money, being very practical. And then we have Aquarius, which is the Seven of Cups. This can be seeing synchronicities, having lots of options, and in this deck, they're all good. They're all amazing, actually. Um, this also can be heaven in your eyes, right? That all is glitters is gold, but it also can be confusion and illusion, depending on your perspective. So remember we have fire in this column. This is earth signs. This is air signs. And then we have water over here. So Pisces has the seven of wands reversed, which is feeling uh, defenseless to these energies coming in. This can be an attack or feeling ganged up on by other people or just energies in general. This also can be learning how not to feel defenseless, like not needing an excuse. Like you only get defenseless because you feel like you did something wrong and you need an excuse. But you can learn that you don't need an excuse because you're allowed to be you. And it's their issue. If they're not okay with it, they don't have to hang around with you, but they also have no right to gang up on you like that. I mean, if you did something awful, yeah, that might happen, but maybe you feel perfectly justified in it and that's your perspective as well. Everybody's perspective is valid. Unless, of course, they're lying, you know. And then you should be able to use your intuition to figure that out. And why would you want to be around those people anyway? So then um, going forward, we'll take it forward a few cards for the whole collective here. Let's see, we have the Ace of Cups. So there may be people getting dumped this week during the eclipse. This can be also tears of joy. This can be overwhelmed, pushed to your emotional limit. You could be holding water of any sort and then purging it out. This could be vomiting. This could be um, peeing too much. This could be someone with prostate issues. This could be someone sweating a lot, working out a lot. But again, it's about dumping an emotional load, one big load dumped out. And then we have the Empress here. So she looks like she's happy. She's got control of the ring <laughs> and a chastity belt, perhaps. Um, this can be Taurus energy, but it doesn't have to be Taurus. It's either the Empress or a Taurus. So if it's Taurus, it doesn't mean it's an Empress. It just means it's a Taurus. But if it's the Empress, it can be any sign. So what's coming up after the Taurus is the Four of Swords, which is taking a rest or a break, sleeping, focusing on your heart issues, perhaps, or feeling heart stress. Somebody's a bit nervous, keeping their hand close to their weapon over here. This can be just worried about verbal things, or somebody might be scared at night that someone might do something to them while they're sleeping, or maybe they're scared of ghosts that might come in. But that can also be a 5D connection in a twin flame union. And there are some of the, like a soulmate that's right next to the twin flame connection, like just one step down from a twin flame. You could probably feel each other in that relationship too. Um, but it's not, you know, nothing's quite like the twin flame connection. It's a little bit different. So you could be feeling each other. Um, 
but it is that 5D connection there. With a big focus on heart, this could be focusing on a heartbreak as well, because we have the in this card we have the three swords pointing at the at the heart, which is the three of swords, which is heartbreak, disappointment, separation. Okay, and so in the underlying energies we have fire. So fire is the double reverse, which is detoxing. This could be dealing with chaos too, right? Because remember, when dealing with codependencies and addictions, the worst has to happen before you detox. So this is partly the worst of it, because then you go into detox right after that because of that, the peaking out of an addiction. And that's fire signs. So you're detoxing some kind of codependency or addiction. Earth signs, you have the five of cups in the underlying energies, which is getting over loss, regret, guilt, and shame, wishing these dark birds would go away. Maybe they have. Okay, letting go of the past. All of those things are coming up for the earth signs. Letting go of the emotionalism that you've perhaps been sitting in for a while. And then we have the um, air signs, which is the four of cups, which is starting over in love, you know, dumping out what was being offered, the temp what you were tempted by, and either taking it and moving forward or starting or just not taking it and starting over again um, with what you're in right now. And that's for the air signs. Letting go of boredom and apathy, of grounding, integrating, taking time to think about an offer and dumping it and not following through with this cycle, just letting it go and starting from scratch. And then we have water signs, which has the death card reversed which can be that you dealt with a death this year, so it's not current, but it's after a death. This can be a near-death experience, or you could just be dead tired, or tired of the same old story that is never ending. So that's water signs going through that. So you're all kind of in a limbo-ish energy, which is why we're coming up to an eclipse, because the eclipse is gonna clear all that crap out. So then we have three coming in. So we'll leave the deck there as we have the world is reversed, so a lack of completion here in the world reversed. Let me show you that card. All right, so here's the world reversed. This is all underlying energy before the read. We have the two of pentacles reversed and the full reversed, and this is lacking faith. Feeling like the world is upside down. This can be the divine feminine, the 5D, right? But this is incompletion, right? Maybe you're close to the completion here with the world card coming up. You're almost there, almost there. Right? This is opening up your heart to the world and the world opening up their heart right back to you. It's almost done, the cycle here. Um, this is somebody either who tripped up, messed up, uh, dropped the ball, breaking patterns, dropping the act, dropping the facade, right? This is all about breaking patterns, no, no longer juggling something that doesn't serve you. And this is about falling, you know, tripping up, falling on your face falling from grace because you lacked faith. This can be f being afraid of embarrassing yourself, right? Maybe you're afraid if you break your, a pattern and go for something that you're going to make a fool of yourself and then where are you going to be? So it's, the, it's all about fear and lack of faith. Let's put these guys two down here. All right, let's see what is next. Next is going to be the Lenormand Reverie here. And I pre-shuffled all of these cards. Let's see what comes up with here. I'm going to see the play between the different signs here too. So for example, we have Aries and Sagittarius are both water signs. We have the Queen of Cups and the Page of Cups. So they can be mother and child, okay? Aries and Sagittarius. We have um, the Queen of Wands in Libra and Virgo's Knight of Wands reversed. This, these could be siblings or um, a relationship that's needing to work itself out but a lot of fire there as well, All right? This is very emotional here. Um, yeah, and Scorpio could be involved in this too, because we've got a lot of fire with, with uh, Virgo, Libra, and Scorpio, and then Gemini and Pisces. They're all fire. Fires, but Pisces is feeling defenseless. Gemini is arguing, which is Gemini, because they're all about communication. And then um, Scorpio may be on their last leg, about to give up. And the main players here are Virgo and Libra in the fire realm. And then with the air, we have Cancer, suffering in silence. We have Taurus, finding peace. We have Leo with the truth. 
And then again with the cups energy, we also have Aquarius over here with lots of options or seeing things or seeing synchronicities or perhaps confused about which one to pick. So fire we have, it's funny because we have a lot of, we have the devil reverse with the fire signs, which is all about detoxing emotional relationships or mother-child relationships and the truth between them. For earth, we have getting over loss, regret, guilt, and shame of finding peace, feeling paralyzed by your passions and holding on perhaps when you shouldn't be clinging to things. And then for the air signs, wanting to start over after an offer or contemplating or ignoring someone or something, and then getting into heated debates because you're not expressing your truth. Dealing with the queen of wands is using her feminine wiles to get what she wants and the confusion and illusion around all of this. And then we have the cups energy here, uh, perhaps Scorpio leading the pack up here. And we have Capricorn leading up there. Scorpio reversed after a death or near death experience or just dead tired dealing with the never ending story, the never ending story of suffering in silence, perhaps hurting at night and the wounded warrior still being in the victim mentality, both of these energies in that victim mentality, which is getting wiped out at the um, eclipse moon here feeling defenseless to the energies here with Pisces or needing not to feel defenseless anymore and not needing an excuse because I am who I am and that's just how it is. And all of them have to do with letting go of fear. So at this eclipse, it's going to wipe a lot of this out. So it's bringing up your fears so that they can be cleared out at this eclipse energy. This is a special eclipse. It, happened, it hasn't happened since 580 years ago. All right, so for Aries through Pisces, again, this is the Lenormand Reverie. Aries through Pisces, all 12 signs, please. All 12 signs for the lunar eclipse coming up 11-19-2021. Aries to Pisces, Aries to Pisces, there we go. All right, so for Aries, we have the home and the four of stability. The emperor can come up with that as well. So there's stability regarding codependencies, regarding a child. Perhaps it could be a spoiled child or a child who's scared to leave the home because they have a lot of anxiety issues. But it's all about home and stability. Then we have Taurus with time issues, time collapse, right? Everything has to be on a schedule, structured. 37 is the King of Cups. And this is Taurus finding peace with the King of Cups, perhaps, regarding timing and allowing themselves to feel more like they have all the time in the world. Then we have, um, this can be also be for Taurus is allowing yourself time off to take a break and you know, take a vacation or something. Then we have Gemini. Gemini has the pushy polar bear mama and there's definitely debates going on here. So you could be fighting with your kids or trying to push them to do what's best for them from your perspective, but it may not be theirs. And we have the 15 of the devil energy here. So that again is calling out for codependencies. The, um, let me put these up here. And then we have Cancer and it looks like Gemini is pushing Cancer over here. And Cancer has luck on their side right here with the feminine energy or the high priestess, perhaps has some secrets they're keeping to themselves, but luck is on their side, or maybe their wishes are about to come true. Okay. But it looks like Gemini is pushing, is pushing Cancer. You know, I don't find any movement over here, except Taurus is finding some peace over here. But there's some energetic exchange between Cancer and Gemini. Perhaps there's, Ge Gemini may be trying to push their, to go, things to go their way, but I don't think like Virgo cares, like they're not going to fight with them about it. It's not worth their time. Um, and then we have Leo. Wow, Leo, you have, you probably have the nicest energy here because they're all difficult energies because we were about to clear a bunch at the eclipse. But you have the truth on your side here and you have the loving feminine here. The 29 is the three of wands being present in the moment and also gifts, whether that's receiving gifts or your actual psychic gifts or any other gifts that you may have. Maybe she got the last rose. So is this you, Leo, or is that the female in your life? The truth is out. What do we have for Virgo? 
Oh, spiritual maturity and peace of union. But paralyzed by passions here or falling short of your own expectations or somebody else fell short of your expectations because this Knight of Wands could be somebody else. And that's the same with Gemini. Like this could be your mother in a heated debate with you. So this is for Virgo. This is about spiritual maturity and peace, finding peace. And I feel like it's you finding peace and this could be your own energy, right? Maybe your shadow side or somebody you're dealing with that you need to make peace with or you have made peace with. And that's a very beautiful card. So the queen of wands, if this was like player energy, which it could be, but I don't feel like it's an absolute like jerk player who just lies and doesn't give a crap about anyone else. I don't feel that energy. You wouldn't have this card unless you did get sexually um, abused at some point in your life. Maybe you've, you're making peace with that at this point in your life. But this is all about home and union as well, coming home. And then we have Libra energy with the Queen of Wands. And we have the Knight of Cups here on this card, which is an offer of love, taking a chance on love. So Libra, are you taking a chance on this Queen of Wands? Or are you this Queen of Wands taking a chance on love? But either way, taking a chance on love. Or maybe somebody deems the Queen of Wands as a risky, right? A risky try, right? Because we have the Knight of Cups with the Queen of Wands. She might make the Knight of Cups feel intimidated. And then we have Scorpio, the wounded warrior. And again, is in the victim mentality. Down on one knee, about to give up. And again, it could be someone who just jumped out of a plane. And we have the Wounded Warrior again with the 35. And the anchor that's not anchored down, right? It's not connected to anything. So there's a ship that has nothing to ground into here. So wounded, the Scorpio is about to let go of a, a big thing here. Because it's all about playing the victim here. Right? To get your way. But there's nothing to ground into here anymore. There's no anchor to, you know, to throw out and stop your ship if you want to hang out. This can be cutting cords as well in a relationship. Or just feeling very wounded. But again, you can't, you can't become the wounded warrior unless you let someone, let someone, um, allow you to feel, let someone do that to you, right? You, it's your choice to feel that way or not. It's your choice to be the, be the victim or play the victim rather than just, you know, pick yourself up by your bootstraps and make yourself happy instead of dealing with that energy. And then we have Sagittarius here with the Queen of Cups reversed and the five of the family tree here, which has to do with growth and family, clearing the family line, the lineage, the rainbow bridge, which is about ascension and letting go of your wounds from the family. So Sagittarius may be deep in doing shadow work with their family and just purging, being emotional. You know, maybe you have cancer in your heart because there's purging over here too, which is good though. So you're clearing family lines so that you won't have those kind of triggers come into your life anymore. And you're facing this lack of faith over here. With Capricorn holding things close to your chest, you know, it's very Capricornian. They're all about business and money and building an empire, that kind of thing. And you have the maze or the, the labyrinth here. And this is about trying to stay in your own lane until you get to the center, you know, but it can be confusing at times. This is the 43 of how to come together. How do we come together in this sacred space over here where it's really good? You feel like everybody's separated in their own lane, just trying to figure out where to go. And you have to have faith in that, that if you just keep going, it will lead you to the center because in a maze, of course, that's true. Sometimes you have to stop and turn around and go another way, but eventually you will get to that center. So it's about coming together and probably keeping your cards close to your chest about what it is that you're thinking about doing here. Then we have Aquarius, right, with heaven in your eyes. Are you confused? Are you seeing things? Oh, we got the little puppy. Somebody might have gotten a puppy, or maybe your puppy had puppies. Maybe it had seven puppies. This is a, a pup or a child who wants you to take the lead, or maybe that's you wanting them to take the lead. The 18 for me in this card is so much about romanticizing. You know, the puppy romanticizing that one day that child will actually come home from school and take me out for a walk like they're supposed to. 
I love them anyway. Right? So it's just the romantic dream that someone actually wants to help you out here. Somebody take somebody else to take the lead. But again, it could be your dream come true that you got a puppy or that you were able to get your child a puppy. Or that you maybe you maybe you got pregnant and you're it's like a, you never thought this would happen and it's it's like a dream come true. Or again, like I said, your puppy could be having a litter too because that came up somewhere else in the last day or two too um, in another read that I did. So what's coming up for Pisces here is the loving man. So this is a man with the last rose. And look, Leo has the rose. It's like on The Bachelor, the man with the last rose. The 28 is a choice of path or a twin flame. And this could be Pisces defenseless to this energy, or maybe you are Pisces here defenseless to whoever it is you're giving the rose to. We got the loving man and the loving woman, Leo and Pisces here. Very interesting. And then going forward for the whole bunch, we have the powers that be and exposing them to the heartbreak, to the purging that's gone on because of the powers that be. And then we have the Empress with that ship that is sailing right straight through. That's the Empress too, the three of abundance. And perhaps having an easy sail right over the mountain, no problems at all. Or is the ship stuck on the mountaintop because there's no water to float your boat? But it looks like she's got, she might be traveling the Empress here. But the Empress, remember, this is for all of you guys. And maybe someone's getting dumped or dumping someone else because then they can be all to themselves and travel alone. Maybe you couldn't afford to travel if you had another person with you, but you can if you're alone. And then we have the Four of Swords taking a break. And again, Taurus was coming up as taking a break. So this could be someone going on their dream trip of a lot of abundant flow and energetic exchange, perhaps going to the islands or traveling around the world. I don't know if you can do that everywhere right now, but just being able to have exchanges with anyone you want without a partner who's telling you what to do. That's what I'm getting from this here. So whoever's freeing themselves, this could be a mother, a grandmother, a boss, or just someone empower, totally empowered them, themselves or has a lot of money or just got an inheritance and they're dumped. They just got dumped or they dumped somebody else to go on vacation and take a break with a lot of abundance, travel, and dealing perhaps with a spa or some kind of place they're going to, or got dumped by their work, or got laid off, and they're actually ha happy about it, or maybe they retired. So the bottom of this deck is the mice, the pain in the butt mice, the little thieves, the king of wands here, who may be a little bit of a pest here. Okay, so three cards at the bottom of the deck are the wise birds, this is wise counsel, the 42 of direction and the two partners or couple soulmates who need to follow their true north and then the, the pests that who are in the way so is this the king of wands or is it the king of wands responsibilities and their kids or their people at work or the mice in their house eating up all their food maybe their kids friends so this is what's coming up in general and as I'm putting them down, this has ended up right next to the Queen of Cups at Leo, at Leo's place. Is Leo not cleaning up after themselves? I don't think of Leo as an anal person. Leo can have Virgo in their chart, which can be very anal. I'm Virgo, but I'm not an anal Virgo. But Virgo is a perfectionist. So you could, if you had a lot of Le Virgo in your chart, you could definitely not be that person. But a Leo without Virgo in their chart could definitely have the mess going on at their house. And so now we have Metatron. What is Metatron's advice for everybody here? So definitely Pisces. I see Pisces. There's a relationship maybe between Pisces and Leo, but there could be a relationship here as well. And there could be a relationship. This page of cups could be an adult who's acting like a child in a relationship with this Queen of Wands Sagittarius. So Aries and Sagittarius, there could be a relationship too. There could also be a sadness between Sagittarius and Cancer, which could also be the same person. And, you know, with Leo, there's definitely big truth there. And maybe Pisces is defenseless to Leo's truth.
so the purging here with the cups may definitely have to do with Aries, Sagittarius, and Aquarius. And then this is definitely Taurus, so Taurus may be taking a vacation here. And what other majors do we have here too? Like no majors here. This was the first major? That would be really unusual. Yeah, no majors. I mean, there is the top of the columns. So fire has, you know, the codependency issues. And water has the, the need to end cycles, clinging to cycles, not letting things end, or dealing with a death, dealing with a transformation, a big transformation, dealing with the dark night of the soul, or dealing with um, just being dead tired all the time, like the never-ending story, whether it's because you're working too much, or that somebody won't let go, or whatever it is for you. That's the deal with um, the water signs there. And again, the cups is water. So even though there's no cups on the water side, these cups could be very much affecting water signs over here. And then again, we have the air signs taking a rest. All right, so for Aries through Pisces from Metatron deck, Aries through Pisces and the Metatron deck for November 19th going towards the eclipse from the 18th to the 19th, 2021. The full moon, lunar eclipse, November 18th to the 19th, 2021 from Aries to Pisces, all 12 signs, please. Okay, this is from Metatron now. This will be much more spiritual. So for Aries, we have leadership, answer the call. And this reminds me of the Ten of Wands card in the Syrian Starseed deck, where it's the Atlas energy leaving the Wounded Warrior behind. So the Wounded Warrior is that energy of the Ten of Wands, the flames that you're carrying, and only taking one with you and leaving the other nine behind. So no longer being the victim. And this could be this child learning how to empower themselves. You know, and this is about being home. So whether it's an anxious child who's afraid to leave the house, who's now going to empower themselves, or is it a spoiled brat who you want to kick out of the house, learning to empower themselves, all right? Those are the scenarios for Aries. What's coming up for uh, Taurus is Archangel Sandalphon, which I love in this deck because it's such a sweet creative energy as opposed to the warrior type energy. Um, coming up as with you now, the 22 of the Fool's journey as opposed to the wounded warrior who's the victim. The Fool is an open heart taking a leap of faith because they have trust and that leads them to unconditional love which is where you want to be. All right, so we're leaving behind the human wounded warrior journey which we came into as a human and leaving that wounded warrior journey of the 3D to move to the Fool's journey in order to find ourselves in unconditional love. So again, we have the harp energy here, of the triangle and the wings, and they're, they're kind of wispy, you know, with their hair, and they're kind of looking off into the distance, a very romantic view of the world on the fool's journey. And this is that Taurus energy, getting what they want, going on an adventure. They're so excited to, to perhaps that dream vacation they've never had before, or just finding peace within themselves. It's a very creative, romantic energy, but just within themselves, not because of a relationship. It's about getting over loss and regret and the past and moving on and probably traveling. Okay, and then we have Gemini. Gemini is coming up as a little cold. Mother Earth, grounding and support. So this is about, you know, preservation. And the 18 again is here with the moon. And we have this eclipse coming up here, eclipsing out the moon, which is the, the false light, as they're dealing with the soul-swapping machine on the moon over the eclipse. But I always felt like with this card that the icing the field was going to be a new way of getting plants to grow better. And this could even be a crystal, some kind of crystal that helps the plants to grow in the winter to become... I have plants in my garden growing. It's freeze. It's getting really cold out. It wasn't too bad today, but it's been really cold at night. And I have new I have plants growing new leaves at the bottom. Like, what the heck is that? So there's just new energy. It's that same energy of the um, 
olive trees that grow in Morocco and the pine trees that grow in, this, in northern Canada, they get extra potent because they're growing in a place that they shouldn't otherwise grow. And that's the energy that's coming up for you, Gemini, you know, growing in a place where you wouldn't otherwise normally grow. And perhaps you want to experiment with putting ice cubes on different places on your body to help heal yourself, because that came up in an ad the other day when I was guided to it. So, and again, we've, it's really icy here. You've got the polar bear and the ice cube here. So you might be going into your dark mother, so you might want to check yourself. Not be too pushy here. Because you're not expressing your true feelings. The polar bear pushing doesn't have to, always have to be a bad thing. But here, you know, someone's not expressing their true feelings and there's heated debates here. Or causing delays because of resistance because you're pushing. So let go of that. There's, there's too much cold here. Right, putting the heat away, there needs to be a rebalancing. You need to bring some fire back into your energy. And then we have Cancer here with a message in a bottle. This is a beautiful communication. So this is somebody who might be like Rapunzel in the tower, but they also have luck on their side in getting their wishes. And here's the message in the bottle coming through. And the shell could be a clarion call as well. Speak up and be heard. So you may have been heard. It's a very romantic energy, actually. And I've been getting this a lot in my twin flame reads about where the land meets the sea, right? That's the ideal point. That's the zero point energy. Where they come together on the same level, like not a mountain that's over a beach, right? Because that would be someone towering over the other one. This is where you meet on an even, even playing field. So that's for Cancer. And the never-ending story, right? Because this is about romantic love. All right, so for Leo, what's going on with this relationship over here? Oh, stop and go. We have the sacral chakra and the solar plexus chakra of confidence, but this also can be the gold light of, of the Christ energy above your head. So, on a wing and a prayer, red light, green light. Now your lower chakra system is activated here with the oranges and yellows, even though this could be the gold that's not actually your solar plexus, although it should be because there's no other yellow represented here. But this, we're going to Sagittarius, so you need to be careful about overdoing things, right? Because the Sagittarius is still in, in the south node. So as we switch into Sagittarius next week, it's about Sagittarius is going to be about overindulgence, right? Because it's all about expansion. And we're letting go of the things we overindulge in. Should I stay or should I go? But there's love here between... I mean, Pisces doesn't have to be your counterpart part over here. These actually could be siblings as well. But Leo's thinking with the truth, and she's being very romantic here, romanticizing, should I stay or should I go? Red light, green light, there's a lot of sexual energy as well as that unity consciousness and the Metatron, of course, Metatron's cube. So this is for Leo. The tree of life, travel on. And perhaps Leo has Taurus in their chart and you're the one who's traveling over here. All right, so Virgo. Virgo has the family and circles of life. This is a really beautiful, this could be a family reunion or just that you in general have an amazing relationship with all your family members. 49 is that nine of cups of getting your wish, of having independence and yet having an amazing family at the same time. There's really spirit, spiritual maturity and peace here or making peace with any, someone who may have fallen short of expectations, but that's okay and that could be you but that perhaps you maybe felt you fell short of your family's expectations, but they are actually are all accepting you just the way you are, which is really amazing energy. There's a lot of sunshine and peaches. This is compassion here. It's a beautiful family relationship here, perhaps coming full circle with some of your family members. Libra, love, relationships and harmony, six. This is love, totally the love relationship. And there's definitely matching energies between these two. 
Got some Taurus energy there with the Sandalfon colors too. Leah, but Libra's taking a chance on love. That was coming up in the Twin Flame reads today too. Taking a chance on love and family perhaps. This may be a really good match here because there's a really good symbiosis of family here and one-on-one -on -one love with Libra, especially if there's a Virgo with Libra in their chart or Libra with Virgo in their chart. That could be a match right there for sure. And you see how it's popping in the middle. And also Virgo to Libra is the center of the astrological chart. That's like the zero point. So that could, there could be love blossoming there for sure. And it can be both ways because this can be the Queen of Wands or it could be they're looking at the Queen of Wands and the same for the Knight of Wands over here. And then for Scorpio. Scorpio has the cosmos mirroring you. And that's to do with judgment. So if Scorpio, if you're being really super judgmental, you're going to get that right back. So with karma shortening right now, the reason why karma goes away is because it becomes instant. So if you do something, it comes right back in your face. So you may be seeing this. Be careful what you wish for. Be careful what you say, what your intentions are, because it's going to come right back and hit you in the head. All right. We have something you're not grounded into here. You know, you could be cutting cords. But you're also playing the victim energy with the wounded warrior, you know, not giving it up. It's like pride and, you know, Scorpio is stubborn. So it definitely could be some, some unwillingness to let go of having your way. Or just feeling defeated. But needing to choose to not be defeated, to find the happiness or a different perspective in every situation, right? Instead of getting absorbed with our emotions. And that happens to everybody. But Scorpio, we're in Scorpio right now, and Scorpio's got really strong emotions because they go really deep. Scorpio's not afraid to face their dark side. And you're clearing that out right now, which is all for everybody about letting go of victim mentality. All right, so now we have Sagittarius. Clarity and going within, meditation. Okay, so someone who's been um, over-emotional here or depressed or perhaps drinking too much but going through a lot of family clearing here, the best for you is meditation and go within. Like, make sure you put time aside for yourself. Oh, it landed standing up straight, just like this. We have the 15 here of the shadow or the devil, which is, again, when you feel triggered or when you feel like your dark side's coming out, meditate. Okay, especially when dealing with family. There may be certain family members who really trigger you. So, what number was there? It's family. Just make sure I, I dealt with the numbers there. All right, so now we have Capricorn. Capricorn, you have evolution and birthing the new. So you could have a new child. This could be a new idea, a new you, right? No longer being the victim. The 40 of the Page of Cups, which came up up here for Aries. So Capricorn may have a connection to Aries. And again, you're holding on, trying to be practical because you may be saving because you have a child now. And just staying in your own lane, taking it a step at a time, knowing that you'll get there, that you'll get there. Don't worry, right? So having a child is always a challenge, whether it's a child or a new business or a new you, whatever it is. It's always a challenge because we don't think... How, how are we going to do this? Like all of a sudden you have a baby. I don't know how to hold a baby yet, right? When you first have a baby, how am I going to get through this? And you don't need to know. You just need to take it one step at a time and stay in your own lane and go within and just remain calm. Just like in a, any kind of traumatic situation, you know, put your air mask on. If you need to take care of your children, do it for yourself first and then remain calm so that you can think clearly. I had to deal with this recently because my water heater broke. So it was so funny because, you know, of course you're jumping because there's all of a sudden water is pouring out all over your basement. You got to run, you got to turn the water off. You got to figure out who's going to come and clean it up. And I had to call like six different people just to get someone to come. And it wasn't even right away. So meanwhile, I had to go downstairs and start, you know, getting buckets of water and dumping in the sink, which, which isn't easy for me because I have some injuries. So it's the same kind of thing, staying calm. So when you find yourself saying, oh no, what do I do? Take a deep breath. It's all okay. You know it's going to be fine. It'll all get taken care of. Everything's going to be fine. So that's Capricorn. Just know it will all be well. Page of, sore, a page of cups. Go into your inner child, the innocence of your inner child. And if you're having a baby, 
follow what they do, right? They're innocent and new and they have new DNA coming in now. So they're really pure and they're really like wise. So, you know, your child will teach you a lot in growing up if that's the case. And this could be too, Sagittarius and Capricorn meditating on your inner child, which I do every day actually. Okay, so that's just really beautiful. You're birthing the new and just take it one step at a time to get through the maze and the labyrinth of your life or your challenge here in coming together, that all will be well. And yeah, and you're being very practical here too. And perhaps saving money because you have a child or a new birthing of something. And then with Aquarius, you know, if it's a new baby, this could be that same energy of a child and Capricorn and Aquarius could be related in that sense. And Aquarius. Aquarius has the dreams come true. Maybe you're going to Disney World or Disneyland. There's a message here for you. Dreams can come true. It can happen to you if you're young at heart. That's been coming up a lot. So again, this could be a child who just really wants to go to Disney World or Disneyland. And maybe you're telling them, you know, that all that glitters is not gold. But this could definitely be a possibility for you here because I'm only seeing positive energies. It's like a dream come true that a child gets to go to Disney World. And you could be a grown-up, but your inner child never got to go to Disney and you're going to get to go now. And if you're Aquarius with Taurus, you're definitely getting your wish here. All right, and then we have Pisces over here. Hearing the clarion call, the wake-up call. Listen and take note. Eleven of justice, truth and balance, along with a man with a rose and feeling defenseless to it. Somebody had a wake-up call, whether it's you or the other person. So you're, if, a, if you're a guy, you're waking up to someone you love the way you need to treat them and making a decision. And you're feeling defenseless to these energies of love. There's a wake-up call here of justice. So there could be Libra energy there too as well. Maybe you're having a wake-up call, Pisces, as to what love actually is. Maybe you've had relationships recently that left you really confused because they weren't showing you love. They were showing you control or manipulation or not being good enough or everything but what love should be, which should be peaceful and loving and calm and exciting at the same time. Not feeling stressed out or worried about being perfect. That's not what love is. Is Love is allowing you to be exactly who you are. So you could be learning about what love is. So for the collective here, what are the three cards coming out? The flower of life, creation, expansion in your life. So there's going to be new, birthing the new coming forward here. Again, the empress, there's lots of abundance of birth. And then we have with that duality, which is, again, taking the poles and bringing them to the middle, the king of wands, the man of passion. There's balance that's needed here in duality, right? When you're at one extreme, look at the other extreme in order to to merge them to the middle, which is what the eclipse is doing. It's having the sun and the moon as polarities and eclipse or merging them to be the earth in the center, which then brings the earth to the center point field, which is a really powerful place to be for earth to be at this eclipse time in the middle of the night. So balance is being, you know, you're being called for balance. This could be in Sagittarius overdoing it, right? Saying, oh, I'm free. I'm going to go spend a ton of money and go travel and everything. But it's reminding you there's balance needed if you might screw yourself if you overdo it in Sagittarius here. Because Sagittarius were purging out. And then we have the Kundalini of untapped energy of the wounded warrior. So again, this this energy is being tuned into like revving an engine, burning that last crap off of you, a victim mentality to let go of the end of it. Okay, and that's for all of you guys. So be careful about overabundance. And Sagittarius and doing too much, whether it's codependencies, addictions, spending, traveling, anything that you love, you can do too much of now in Sagittarius, but it's not in a good position for that because in the south node, we're letting go of that. So if you do have addictions to overdoing it, it's going to be shown to you now so you can let go of it before we go into the new year in Capricorn. And also we're, go we're changing the north node. So the north node moves then to... Taurus as the North Node 
and Scorpio is the south node. Um, that's December 22nd, 21. So then the bottom, the underlying energies from this deck is all about Thanksgiving with blessings and thanks. Make sure to have gratitude for everything you do. Thank your water, bless your water so that it goes through you and loves you and then loves the rest of the world when it goes out of you and pee. And then be authentic to yourself. Who are you? Be the innocent ch inner child that you are, the two children loving each other. And the dragon strength of the sun and the fire. Right? The passion. What's What are you passionate about? What is it that you love to do? Put these here. Okay. So again, give th Thanksgiving. Have Thanksgiving every day. Every day be authentic to yourself. And every day find what your passion is, your dragon's breath. All right. And we're going to clarify here a little bit with the mini rider weight. Take a deep breath. Okay, this is for Aries through Pisces. What do they need to know for this eclipse? All right, Aries. Aries. The full reverse, which is Aries. We got the King of Cups with you too. And the truth, this King of Cups could be Leo. Okay. So this is somebody perhaps feeling like they made a fool of themselves in front of Leo, this King of Cups who could have water, but also Leo, because the truth is coming up with Leo. Unless this truth is coming from a water sign to Leo. But this is separate because this is Aries perhaps bumping into this King of Cups or making a fool of themselves in front of them or lacking faith in them. And again, this could be a child because we have the Page of Cups. So now we have the whole family here, right? Because we have the Queen of Cups down here in Sag and we have the Page of Cups up here. And now here's the King of Cups, like letting the kid know this is how it's going to be. <laughs> and here's the kid, right, with bad behavior not doing what they're supposed to be. So that just confirms everything we talked about already for Aries. It's really about this child or perhaps dealing with a child like that. All right, Taurus. All right, what's with you and Sandalphon and being all dreamy? Somebody's frustrated, no growth, um, perhaps creatively blocked. But at the same time, maybe you're going on a trip for inspiration because you've been blocked. This could be moving. This could be visiting somebody else's house or frustrated with the house that you're in or the instability that you're in. So this could be an unstable marriage or an unstable home. The party's over. Maybe you just had like spent all year planning for a wedding and now it's over and, there, and nothing. There's nothing to do. You're bored. You're not happy. And we have the the emperor here, right? So this could be emperor and empress divorcing too because they're reversed. This is reversed frustration and the empress looks like she's off on a vacation without him. All right. So this could be a divorce or this could just be doing their own thing where he's going to stay home or he's going to go stay with a friend and she's going to go on a vacation because he doesn't want to travel. But this is maybe she's having bliss because he's not coming with her. All right. And if you're the masculine Taurus, you may be retiring. You may be moving or visiting or frustrated. So again, these eclipses are going to change that. So anything that's it's coming up specifically negative in a certain area because it's showing you what's to be eclipsed out of your life. So with Gemini, you're keeping to yourself. And it was showing that because you have the eight of wands reversed, which causes conflicts, right? So when you don't express your true feelings, you might just be trying to keep your energy clear. So to keep peace of mind for your sanity, but you're coming off as cold. Okay. You need to go follow, go back into your heart, or maybe the queen of cups is going to help you out, right? Someone to talk to, so you don't feel so cold about the pursuit of happiness as opposed to conflict and competition and how empowered you are, Gemini, right? All the abilities that you have that nobody else has, how smart you are, how empowered you are, 
that you have everything you need to make magic here. Perhaps you still don't need, you don't realize that still. Or this is your own energy and kindly battling between different personalities within yourself in order to manifest your dreams. But you're coming off a little bit cold right now. All right, so what about cancer? I mean, you can be the queen of cups, which is a very loving energy, but that's not the way you're coming off because you're not, you're not expressing your truth. All right, so Cancer, and that could be a Cancer because I told you Gemini and Cancer. Gemini was pushing Cancer, and Cancer's not being affected by your pushiness. They're just focusing on love and, and sending love back to you. Cancer. Cancer may be dealing with unhappy family members or just emotionally unfulfilled. It doesn't mean they're having any issues specifically, but they may be having unhappiness with a family or ending a cycle that's way overdue to be ended but there is connection here. There's healing and forgiveness. Okay, so a message in a bottle. These are two people may who had a falling out in the past are coming together here in a deep connection. And it definitely looks romantic. And then we have Leo. So there may be a divorce here. This could be a break from anything, a break from a religion, establishment, societal norms. This is thinking outside the box, being alternative, or a Taurus reverse. This can be a divorce, though. And this is somebody who's very uncomfortable because they're unable to walk away yet from whatever they're breaking away from for a higher love. Patience, balance, taking one step at a time off the beaten path, not wanting to do things the traditional way anymore. Okay, so Leo, it looks like you're dealing with Taurus Reverse and Sagittarius Upright. Per, or Patience. And this could be stepping down from a leadership role because you want to take your shoes off and just take your day as you want to do it. You don't want to be in a structured environment anymore. That could be you retiring, right? Red light, green light. But there's a, there's a loving lady here. So are you the loving lady with truth? Or some a loving lady in your life with giving truth to you about what she wants from now on. Or is there, a, I don't feel like if you're divorced, you're already divorced. Because we have the truth here in a really positive way. So I don't feel like it's someone all of a sudden finding out they're getting divorced. If you're divorced or if you're going to divorce, it's already known. It's just uncomfortable because maybe you haven't been able to, um, if it's a divorce, you may not have been able to actually not live together anymore yet and being patient there. Or if you're breaking away from a religion or a business or establishment or some kind of societal norms, you're uncomfortable because you're still living with some of those people who believe in those things. So it's just a matter of getting out of your environment to wrap things up, but it looks like there's big love there for somebody or loving yourself first and you're just really happy with that. What does Virgo have here? Why do we have the Knight of Wands reversed? The Queen of Wands, I told you, Libra and Virgo there, Queen of Wands, and this could be a masculine or a feminine, but expressing their, right, kind of using their sexuality to get their way with Queen of Pentacles reversed, which can be Virgo. And then we have Cancer energy here too. So this is referencing the night or the eclipse. So whatever is between them right now, which can be two women, this could be two women. There's a lot of fire here. So both of them could have fire in their charts, the Virgo and the Libra. But there's Cancer here too. What was this one again? Oh, the dice, taking a chance on love. And this one has the King of uh, Swords over here too with the Virgo. And this is dealing with happy family stuff too. These cards are coming up the same way as the cards here, right? The Queen of Wands is upright in the Libra space, or is that Virgo in Libra space? But they're still upright in both. And then we have the Knight of Wands coming up is the Queen of Pentacles reverse for Virgo. So that's probably Virgo's energy. Unless Libra has Earth in their chart. 
which could represent the, rep the reverse position here. But we have the eclipse and also uh, cancer energy here as well, which can represent the family here. So maybe there's just someone you're not going to be able to spend Thanksgiving with, right? Because the family could represent Thanksgiving. I know I don't have any specific plans. So it could just be spending Thanksgiving on your own or, or reaching out to a family member to see what they're doing. If you want to go have dinner at their house or something like that. So here's Libra over here. And so why does Libra have the Queen of Wands? And that Knight of Cups energy. Whoop, there we go. Knight of Swords reversed and the Page of Pentacles upright. So this could be, you know, either someone's completely silent or cutting someone out. But this can be verbal abuse or trying to hold your tongue, but definitely have something to say. And then here's someone instead offering an opportunity or an invitation. So maybe there's a Libra who has to bite their tongue and invite somebody. But it's love, taking a chance on love. Somebody's scared. <laughs> Someone's scared to invite somebody. This can also be a child. These could be two children who always want to kill each other at Thanksgiving and not wanting to have to deal with that. But there is love here with Libra. It looks like romantic love, actually. Taking a chance with the Knight of Cups. With the Queen of Wands. The Sexy Mama. Again, someone's got to hold their tongue and extend an invitation here. I'm telling you, it's lovey. To someone who feels trapped or imprisoned or perhaps not has nowhere to go for Thanksgiving. And then we have Scorpio. So why does Scorpio have the Wounded Warrior? Frustrated. Scorpio is very sexual. Maybe they're not getting what they want. This can be frustrated in any which way. It can be someone who's totally uninspired or bouncing off the walls. It could be somebody who's sick. It can be someone who wants to go out on a date, but they don't have a date. The King of Pentacles. This could be a, a child and their father. Maybe they're not getting along right now and it's Thanksgiving. Maybe the King of Pentacles gets all the attention from the family that's dysfunctional or unhappy or settling out and the child's feeling left out. So that could be Scorpio or this could be your child feeling the victim because no one's paying any attention to them. But this could be someone who's in the family who's doing really well, who takes care of everybody or has earth in their chart. Maybe they're the star of the family because they do really well. This could be someone who's got Aquarius in their chart or is Aquarius. Uh, that could be Aquarius who does really well with a child with fire in their chart. Um, but there's dysfunctional family here or a loss of money. But this is about, or maybe someone who's spending a lot of money to share with other family members at Thanksgiving or could be settling out in a family settlement in some way. But because of all of this, the, the child is feeling left out here. And they maybe they normally do a lot together, but they can't right now because he's so busy doing practical things. So that's Scorpio. Feeling, feeling wounded, because I guess Scorpio may be feeling ignored or this child is feeling ignored by you. It could also be, the King of Pentacles could also be ignoring the Page of Wands reverse because they did something stupid. And the King of Pentacles doesn't have time for it right now. And they're like, they just, they want to beg for their forgiveness. <laughs> Please forgive me, I don't want to be ignored right now. And then we have Sagittarius. Sagittarius. Two of Wands reversed. So this is about needing to choose a path. And maybe you have chosen one, you just can't implement it quite yet. Or this is feeling like you've got no options. And so you're meditating, you know, and you're dealing with family. So family that you may not ever get along with. So you're meditating when you are triggered. And this is something that's not working out or being overworked or deciding not to work. 
whichever one it is for you, you're meditating and you're dealing with your triggers, which is good. Your codependencies, like when you get temptation here to be triggered, whether this is sexual or just a family member who's tempting you, right? Because they know your, your buttons to push, the ball and chain, whoever you're tied to, Sagittarius. And that could be a Capricorn because you're right next to Capricorn who may be tempting you. Maybe they're tempting you to start a fight. It doesn't have to be sexual. But Capricorn here. Six of Wands. Successful, leading the way. And that's very much of this King of Pentacles energy. So maybe that Aquarius over there has Capricorn in their chart as well. But successful, having good news to bring in, leading the way. And there's the wounded warrior surrendering. So when the King of Pentacles has time after he deals with settling out over there, he's going to deal with the wounded warrior over here, Scorpio. Okay. So Capricorn will deal with you when you get over yourself, right? Because here the wounded warrior is upright, still defending all their wounds. But if you just surrender and let go of that energy that they're probably feeling, which is probably why they'll ignore you until you let go. And then they'll come in because they'll feel the energy release and then they'll be fine with dealing with you. And that's, ex yeah, I relate to that completely. But that definitely could be Capricorn and Scorpio. This is where Scorpio comes clean about what they really think, right? Because they weren't expressing this is coming clean, getting clean, or cleaning up their act, right? So if Scorpio had any codependencies, they may be cleaning it up, or maybe they needed to clean up the house, and that's why the dad was pissed. And maybe they finally surrendered and cleaned up. And this could also be like, I'm the baby, gotta love me. I'm the baby, gotta love me. And this is the need to get over that, right? You can't lie, cheat, and steal and get away with it all the time because other people aren't going to, you know, it's like the boy who cried wolf. They're not going to put up with that crap anymore, especially not Capricorn. And again, this could be having issues at work or a third party through work. Somebody might be coming clean about that. And so what about Aquarius? Aquarius, why are you going to Disney World? You have Cancer, you're dealing with Cancer here. Cancer had this Nine of Swords reversed, or upright. I don't know if it's upright or reversed, but this is someone trying to get over the nightmare. You know, when you're in a Nine of Swords, you're trapped because you haven't gotten to the Ten yet, but if you go back, you're still in prison in the Eight of Swords. So feeling like, you know, trying to end the nightmare of not getting your wish, like this is somebody who's dreamed their whole childhood of going to Disneyland or Disney World and thinking now they're not going to get their wish because money's been tight this past year or two. This is a falling out between soulmates or a bad childhood or children who have been difficult acting up. And then we have Leo reversed. And this could be a pet. We have a puppy here. This could be a pet. This could be a falling out between a pet and the child. <laughs> the pet's like, take me for a walk. And meanwhile, the child's upset about something else and they're crying in their room and they totally forgot to take the doggy out for a walk. And the doggy feels very abused. Or maybe the dog's not treating you right the way you think they should be treated. Maybe they're not loving you anymore the way they used to and you're mad at them. So what's up with Disney World though? Oh, oh, doggy's going to be upset because you're leaving them at the pound, not the pound, but you're leaving up the doggy center to go to Disney World. <laughs> and maybe neither one of you wants to separate from each other. But if you want to go to Disney World, you can't bring the dog or the cat or whatever the puppy is to you. This could also be of having a litter, taking your puppies away from you and then being mad at your owner child because you let them take your puppies away. Like there could be a lot here, right? This could be somebody driving in and taking their puppies. Okay, now we have Pisces here. Pisces being very present in the moment with their gifts, feeling one with the world. This is about ending the war. The war is over, perhaps dealing with PTSD issues or anyone who tried to steal from you. This is letting go, letting bygones be bygones. This is letting go of some money to fix things up or make amends with people. 
the clarion call, the wake-up call, to do what's best for you and no one else, the energetic exchange, the hours of love with someone who isn't happy with themselves. And there's that Ace of Cups reverse, right? When you're in energetic exchange with someone who's unhappy or dissatisfied, you know, it makes you feel terrible, right? Do you want to hang out with that energy? Or is this you, maybe they're unhappy because of you? And are you making up, making amends with this person? And there's the King of Swords. And the Page of Swords reversed. And there's the Hermit shedding some light on the relationship. Getting some advice, perhaps. Leaving them both feeling out in the cold. And that can just be trying to figure out, um, you know, what are, what do you both really want and what are the issues between you? And if someone's showing you all the things that are actually between you guys, do you still really want the relationship? And you may, you just may want to be the lovers out in the cold, but others may not understand it and may not want anything to do with it. Okay. But you seem very independent here, Pisces. It's just about waking up other people to what really makes them happy. And maybe the two of you aren't what makes each other happy. Perhaps not this time. And then why do we have the Ace of Cups? Ace of Cups for everybody. Carrying the weight of the world. This is Atlas. So again, dumping emotion. This is, you know, purging a big emotional load. Whether it's sweating it out, crying it out, vomiting it out, whether it's dumping someone, being dumped, pushed to the emotional limit, right? Or just sweating it out. Maybe you're just working it out, working out, right, to get rid of your frustrations. But it's purging the powers that be over here. And this is slave labor, right? There's a the slave driver, right? The powers that be and the slave. You're purging that wound as for everybody here, right? This is the atlas letting go of nine wands to leave one, the leader with one wand, climbing the steps to leave the wounded warrior behind. And as long as you're the wounded warrior, the knight of wands is going to keep using you. And this is destined to be the ace of cups reverse, being pushed to the emotional limit, right? And this could be this the slave... And the slave driver, slave drivers pushing to them to their emotional limit, the Ten of Wands, until you can't take, until you break. Are you going to break? Or are you going to keep plowing away at Ten Wands, which is not good for anybody? And then we have the Empress upright. And the Page of Cups reversed. And the Knight of Cups reversed. She's getting away from some children here. All right, so we have Aries, Page of Cups, and Sagittarius, Queen of Cups. They could be your children, Aries and Sag, with a lot of water in their chart. And you could be Taurus getting a vacation without your children. And they're not happy about that at all. Maybe they're the ones about Disney World here. <laughs> not happy at all. <laughs> Maybe somebody's sad they can't come with, but I can't afford it. And here we have the King of Swords. I guess that they may be staying with the King of Swords while the Empress goes away. There may be some negative self-talk here regarding the hermit here shedding some light. So this could be a grandparent or a professional shedding light for a child here. Or this could be the uh, king of swords who's going, he's in therapy, dealing with his inner child. So maybe he's going to a therapist. This could be a grandparent or just someone close in the family. Or this could be actual Virgo, a friend, who's deal, they're dealing with each other and their inner child. All right, so this could be an air sign and Virgo energy over here. Okay, and that's about the uh, five, the four of swords here, the five D connection. That could be a twin flame couple trying to work things out. Two lovers out in the cold. Okay, so the bottom of the deck ends up with the Knight of Pentacles reverse, which is stubborn, no balls, unable to function in a practical way because they're paralyzed by their emotions. After a sudden event here, after coming together, playing ball, or some kind of sudden event, explosion, eruption, blowing your top, your crown, your mind, your cover, blown out of the water, and paralyzed, <laughs> not knowing what to make of it, because this could be a sexual exchange as well. 
but this can be playing hardball with someone and not knowing what to make of it. There's the pentacle here and it's over here in his hand. So you're getting a close up of what he's holding in the same exact position upside down, holding his balls, <laughs> his balls, while this tower is going on between, between them. This is the underlying energy of what coming together is for this relationship right here. It may be overwhelming, but in a good way. <laughs> but this also could be stubbornness and playing hardball, right? And then a big fight as well. So it can be two extremes here about the underlying energy for everybody. We'll leave that over there. All right, so from the dice, I told you I'd roll the die for everybody. All right, so for Aries, Aries. Okay, Aries, you got Aries. You see that? Let me just touch that so you can see them better. So Aries got Aries. You also got the number six, which is the lovers, love, family, and community. It's also June of Gemini and Cancer. And you got Uranus here as well, which is about Aquarius and sudden changes, sudden events with like the tower. That's you, Aries. Sudden events regarding love, family, and community, which it looks like, because it looks like maybe you're a kid and wants to go to Disney World, but mom's leaving without you and you're stuck with dad and you're not going to Disney World. Or maybe she's going to Disney World without you. And you're like, no fair, I should be able to go too. Okay, but that's what it is. Aquarius, sudden events, Aries, like boldly moving, and six of love, family, and community, and Gemini. Taurus, Taurus, Taurus. All right, we have the sun for Taurus. We have Pisces for Taurus. And we have the number one for Taurus, okay, which is the magician. So Taurus is thinking about themselves first right now, um, perhaps in a dream they've always had to travel somewhere and spend time in the sun. So that's very much what Taurus was coming up as. So very nice. Sun, Pisces, and just focusing on yourself right now. Gemini, Gemini for the eclipse here. Okay, Gemini's got cancer, which we said Gemini was dealing with cancer over here. And you have one too, you're focusing on yourself. And you have Saturn though, so there's more restrictions for you in Capricorn energy. All right, and you have Cancer and Capricorn, which is you're dealing with that same ac access of parenting, mother and father, and thinking of yourself first. But you're coming off as cold, so that's Gemini. Like wanting to do what you want to do, but you have re family restrictions right now. Cancer. Cancer for the full moon, lunar eclipse, the 18th to the 19th for Cancer. Okay, we have Leo, which we thought there may be some connection to Leo. I think there was. All right, we have the number eight, which is a dance between the masculine and feminine. It's also strength, which is Leo. Manifesting, being strong inside and out. There's a lot of Leo energy there. And then again, um, Uranus, which is that the sudden changes. There's a lot of Leo here with Cancer. The 8th of August also says Leo and Virgo and Aquarius with sudden events and the Tower events. So there was suffering in silence, you know, stressed out or not sleeping well for Cancer. I mean, Cancer could have Leo in their chart for sure, but sudden, some kind of sudden event. There's got to be some Leo there in there, whether it's in your chart or dealing with a Leo. Maybe Leo told you their truth, but it's something positive, but it's deep. So it's like cancer may have to process it. But I don't think this is necessarily something really bad. I mean, there's romantic energies here in a positive way. So let's see what Leo has. Leo for the lunar... Uh, eclipse here in full moon, 18th to the 19th of November, 2021. Leo. Leo has Sagittarius. Is that Sag? 
No, I'm sorry, it's Mars. That's Mars. And then we have the number three. And three is the Empress and Abundance coming together, siblings. We have Scorpio here as well, which we're in Scorpio right now. So again, we have Taurus and Scorpio, which is the same axis, plus Mars, which is aggression. So that can be kind of scary because Scorpio and Taurus are, can both be really stubborn. And we have Mars here. And this is for Leo. Leo dealing with perhaps an empress with Scorpio in her chart who's aggressive. Maybe Leo likes that. This could be siblings as well. Maybe Leo, you have siblings who can be aggressive. Or because Mars is strong for you guys right now, it brings you together to do something fun together, something to pamper yourself with Scorpio energy. Scorpio, Taurus, and Mars, which is more Scorpio and or Aries energy. So there's definitely aggressive energy here for Leo, but it looks like about coming together and there's definitely Scorpio energy represented too, but we're in Scorpio. So it could be coming together in an aggressive way. And that could be a sexual way too, because it looks like there's love here. But this also could be sibling love, like really sweet love between siblings as well that are alternative. Want to do something fun together perhaps? Take a trip. Or it's love. And that could be someone you're with already, who's just you're really loving with each other. All right. But I was getting, should I stay or should I go? And that could be a trip. Should I go with them or not? Should I stay with my mate or go on the trip with my siblings? All right, Virgo, for the eclipse, full moon, lunar eclipse, November 18 to 19, 2021, Virgo. Okay, we have Venus. We have Scorpio again, which we're still in Scorpio. And we have number five, which is change, freedom, excitement, expansion for Virgo. So for Virgo, there's love here for sure with Venus. Venus is Libra and Taurus, and we have we already established that Virgo and Libra are connected right here, whether you just have them both in your chart or it's with somebody else. There is love here, and there may be maybe during the Scorpio time period, so this week before it ends. And the change is coming in with the eclipse here, right? So I don't think Scorpio is over on Friday. It's probably not over until the end of the weekend. I don't know when they switch exactly. But this weekend could be big for you. Could be a change with Scorpio too regarding a love relationship or some kind of vacation or excitement going on. And then uh, for Libra, for the full moon lunar eclipse, the 18th to the 19th of November, 2021, Libra. Libra, you have number four, which is all about home and stability. You have Mercury, which is all about communication. And you have Virgo. Okay, so Virgo and Libra are definitely connected here, whether you have them in your chart, both of them, or you have another person there who may be mercurial, which is Virgo. So it's definitely something there between the two, but you're more focused on stability. And communication. And Virgo, which is very practical. So there's a lot of practical energy around Libra right now. Scorpio. Scorpio for the full moon lunar eclipse, November 18th and 19th, 2021. Scorpio. Scorpio, you have the 10, the wheel of fortune, a turn for the better, high vibration. You have the moon with the lunar eclipse. And you have Aries, the ram. So it looks like, a, you know, you have a turn for the better to keep your vibration high with the eclipse. Because there's definitely going to be aggression for you here with the Aries energy. Remember, Aries was an unhappy child. So if you have a water sign child or an Aries water child, um, definitely going to have to deal with that. But just keep the vibration high. There could be Cancer here too, as well as Libra energies, depending on the number. Like Libra had four, and four can be the Emperor, which can be Aries. And Virgo had 
Virgo had five to five, yeah, and five is the Hierophant, which is Taurus energy. So they can all be intermingled there. Sagittarius for the full moon lunar eclipse, November 19, 2021. All right, Sag, you got Sag. And you got Mars. So lots of arrows there. What are we overindulging in? <laughs> May I ask? That's Sagittarius. And number 10, again, you and Scorpio both got the 10 of the Wheel of Fortune in turn for the better. But be careful, like I said, because we're purging Sagittarius out the North Node, right? The internalizing of it and letting it go. So, and Scorpio is, I mean, Sagittarius is all about expansion. So, be careful about that, whatever you're overindulging in Scorpio and Sagittarius or somebody who's got both in their chart or we're on that cusp right now which is coming up, was coming up really significant as the golden gate. The golden gate with the two arrows pointing right here. Very interesting. Okay, that was for Sagittarius. Capricorn for the full moon eclipse, November 19, 2021, Capricorn. All right, we have Mercury again, a lot of communication. That's Gemini and Virgo. We have number two of the high priestess, which is also the feminine energy. Pisces energy, perhaps, and then we have Leo. All right, so communication for Capricorn with Leo, perhaps Pisces, and then anything mercurial. So Gemini, Virgo, or just communication in general with Capricorn, which is typical because they're very business oriented. But there's a birthing of something new coming together, trying to get through this labyrinth, this maze figure out how to get to the middle with communication and one-on-one -on -one connection with Leo energy. But that's the childlike energy as well. And we have the baby here. So it's you focusing, because Capricorn is so responsible all the time. It's about you going into your inner child and just being goofy and fun and perhaps connecting with one of those people like Leo or uh, Virgo or Gemini. Okay. Aquarius. Full moon lunar eclipse, November 19, 2021 for Aquarius. You have Scorpio. You have the number nine, which is the Hermit. It's also the month of September, which is Virgo and Libra. So maybe you're dealing with both. And then we have again the Mercurial Mercury, which is also Virgo and Gemini. Okay, so you have a lot of Virgo there as well as Scorpio and Gemini and Libra. And this is for Aquarius. So communication endings in Scorpio. Pisces, last one for the full moon lunar eclipse, November 18th to 19th. It's actually on the 19th, 2021 for Pisces. Pisces, we got Pisces. And we got... The North Node, which is still in Gemini until December 22nd. And we have the number 12, which is also Pisces for me. Um, it's the Hanging Man, which is traditionally Pisces, but I always get Capricorn for that. So you may have Capricorn in your chart as well. And we have Gemini, North Node, following the twins. That twin energy of soulmates. Right through December, you, have, you still have a strong energy of following Gemini of twins, of connecting two as one, of the 12, of Sagittarius and Capricorn and Pisces as well. And Pisces always comes up as, you know, the Christ energy, plus I always get, well, you know, Christmas or January 6th, and I've gotten January 7th from my guides as Jesus' birthday, but I also get God as December 7th reflecting on that. I actually get December 7th to the 13th, like it's that week-long period, which is God's birthday, which is kind of funny. But there's that energy coming up with Pisces, right? Because Pisces is also the energy of Jesus in March when Pisces comes up. So, but you got a lot of Christ energy around you. Christmas, twins, the 12 days of Christmas, Yeah, maybe 
you should need to maybe you're going to spend time with a Gemini, follow a Gemini prior to just the end of Gemini North Node, so before December 22nd. Maybe you'll be dealing with a Gemini. Beginning of December. Maybe that's maybe you following a Gemini will help you to to you know your truest north right now but only like in the beginning of December before the 22nd maybe that'll actually take you to the place you need to go so if you have a Gemini friend maybe you're going to be hanging out with that Gemini friend because they're going to introduce you to just the right person in December that's Pisces okay and I'm going to draw a romance angels card for everyone then that'll be it so for Aries Dance between the signs. Aries, what is your love advice? That went floating right out the back. Honeymoon. So, Aries, enjoy the bliss of holiday time together. And you were the coming up with the uh, Page of Cups reversed. So, maybe you're the mother of that Page of Cups reversed. And you may be the Taurus energy, too, getting away on vacation. All right, what about Taurus? Taurus, Taurus, worth waiting for. Divine timing is at work in your love life. This is for Gemini. Oop, you got a couple there, Gemini. All right, you got make the effort. Great love is worth taking the steps you're guided to take, right? There's a lot of childlike love right there. Yes, this is your soulmate. That childlike love and getting to know each other. As you reveal your innermost selves to each other, your bond deepens. And the next card actually is give your relationship a chance. So this is definitely good for you. Okay. So maybe your mirror magician's coming. Express your love, Gemini. Because you're coming off as cold, which is maybe why I'm telling you that. So you know that's the way you're coming off, even though you're not being cold. Change your exterior, the way people are perceiving you. So, or soften up your energy a little bit. <sighs> Cancer. Cancer. Cancer, you have reconciliation. Someone from your past is returning to your life. And make sure you release this. Doesn't, if You don't have to have an X, but if you have X energy still in your field, it's time to come. The time has come to clear your energies. So there's reconciliation. Someone's definitely returning from your past. And the, the ex could be their old self, too. So you could release the old them. Like, don't expect them to be the same way. You have new love here. A new person has, has stirred your romantic feelings. Okay? You're calling in your soulmate. All right, Leo. It's worth waiting for. Divine timing is at work in your love life. You also have very soon decide clearly what you want, so it comes to you now. Because you're saying, should I come or should I go? Should I stay or should I go? And then trust. The situation's calling for you to have faith. Okay, Virgo. Just give another shuffle. Virgo. Virgo. There's a bunch of cards that just came up in a clump. Past life relationship. You have known each other before. You have flirt. Extend your lighthearted energy to others, getting to know each other. As you reveal your innermost selves to each other, your bond deepens and give your relationship a chance. Okay, the bottom of the deck is soulmate again. This is your soulmate. You and Gemini, Virgo, have very similar energies and you're both mercurial, so it's very significant here regarding your relationship right now to just soften up your energy. Okay. This is for Libra. 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 Separation. Time apart from your partners on the horizon. So you could be leaving one person for another. Um, this could also be for a vacation or a trip. There is reconciliation from someone from your past is returning to your life. And this could be the one which is coming up after. Let's see. Yeah, free yourself. Time to take control back of your life. So in separation, right, are you reconciling with a new person or with this old person you separated with and remember, make sure to free yourself and that this could be the one. And then you have honeymoon. 
enjoy time of bliss together. The bottom of the deck's new love for Libra. Okay, so Scorpio. Scorpio. Scorpio, safe for you to love. Open your heart and give and receive the highest energy of all. Passion, allow your heart and soul to sing with joy and forgiving and learning. As you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present moments. Keep an open mind, Scorpio. And you have chemistry at the bottom. And Sagittarius. 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 All right, here we go. Release your ex. Time has come to clear your energy. And there's a few here, too. New love, new personal sturgy, romantic feelings, and separation. Time apart from your partners on the horizon. Okay, so you definitely have, looks like for you, there's a couple different people here who are going from one relationship into another with the eclipses, past life relationship, and keep an open mind for you too, Sagittarius. You might have Scorpio in your chart and calling in your soulmate. Okay, affirmations, prayers, visualizations help you come together. And Capricorn. Capricorn, 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 worth waiting for. Divine timing is at work in your love life. And very soon, clearly decide what you want so it comes to you now because there's something about to birth right here. So you need to know before birth, engagement. Your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. The bottom of the deck is it is safe for you to love. Open your heart. And receive, give and receive the highest energy of all. Capricorn. So let go. You're really supposed to, you're being called to your inner child to be more fun and have more fun. And then Aquarius. Retreat. It's time to disconnect from the world. So it looks like Aquarius, Taurus is really connected. They're going away. Attraction. You attract romantic love by enjoying this moment fully. And it is safe for you to love. Open your heart to give and receive the highest energy of all. So that's Aquarius. Love yourself first came up right after that. And then soulmate. Yes, this is your soulmate. That's for Aquarius. And then for Pisces. And remember, we're going to the Taurus North Node by the 22nd of December. So we're going from Gemini to Taurus. And the South Node is going from Sag to Scorpio. And the South Node. Which is letting go. Or internalizing and letting go. Oh, that came right out for Pisces. Playfulness, recapture romance to recapture romance. Allow your inner youthful spirit of fun to shine. So play, Pisces. Express your love. Go ahead and make the romantic gesture. And healing family issues. Your love life benefits as you forgive your parents. And there may be a past life relationship that you've known each other before, but pay attention to the red flags. The bottom of the deck is definitely chemistry, though, for Pisces with keep an open mind underneath. Okay. Okay, guys, I hope that was helpful for you. That was definitely fun for me. Make sure you drink your water, get your rest, you're enjoying your nature. It's 3838 for the Queen of Cups and the Magician of the One. And rise and be love. Have an amazing day, guys. See you later. Bye.